According to Bloomberg, global banks are unintentionally stocking up on risky corporate loans as a result of investors beginning to cut risk in the credit markets. Barclays and Deutsche Bank are sophisticated bankers but last to see investors preparing for the 2019 recession, and smart money leaving markets. Billions are small when considering $70 trillion in negative yield bonds that project weakness to every nation, bankers like politicians are too involved with many forms of nepotism to see the forest. I can't remember ever having repos and 0% interest rates simultaneously. How can we have a lack of liquidity, when at the same time money is being borrowed at such a low rate? What it tells me is, money is going out faster than it's going in, and without the repos, they would default on their payments, creating a seizure. You want a timeline? How about when the repos end? I frankly don't see a way out of this without some type of default or bail-in. Quantitative easing is no longer working, and the banks can't borrow any more money. At a certain point, there will be a big bank failure or multiple failures, which will involve at least some form of a bail-in and presumably some type of bailout, although they may call it something else. When and which bank or banks, is yet to be determined. The repos are the last line of defense, period. War is peace. Slavery is freedom. Ignorance is strength. Debt is wealth. Welcome to Atlantis Report. Debt ruins everything. It caused the 100 years war and the War of the Roses way back when. Underwater with debt means war. Actual history widescreens this quite elegantly. Most currencies in the world are based solely on debt. It all has to be borrowed into existence. It is the most insane proposition the world has ever known, and its proponents are the epitome of evil. The US total debt is north of $206 trillion. So much debt, so little gold. Bankers only have one real product, and that's debt. They have fake money created in a computer backed by nothing, and in the event, they go under the taxpayer will bail them out anyways. There really is no skin in the game for bankers. No real risk that is. The quicker they saturate the market with their debt products, the sooner their business model comes apart at the seams. As soon as you hand over your money, it's no longer yours. The bank is the goalkeeper for that money, and the bank decides if they want to grant you access to it, the majority of the time they will, but they can deny you access to your own money. You have to prove the money is yours, but the bank doesn't have to prove anything. You'd actually be better off, keeping your money in a shoebox under the bed. With bank charges and fees and the measly pittance, they give you an interest, you're losing money, stealing, one penny at a time. Banks like higher interest rates where they can make more profit. Interest rates have to keep falling so economies can take more of their debt products. The unsustainable debt-fueled growth model of neoliberalism. Banks are granted the exorbitant privilege of loaning you currency based only upon your promise to repay the debt, and then charge you interest on your commitment to repay the debt. It is insanity and usury, but it is the way the Western world works. The only and one single thing I like about Sharia law is that no one is legally allowed to charge interest on IOU loans. But the people will lose real assets to the bankers. This is what the plan is. Give loans to people who have no financial discipline. Seller will take the money and go away, the borrower will not be able to maintain loan payments, and the bank will take the property cents on the dollar and this property will end up into the assets of some big fat bankers. Deposits are nothing but liabilities on a bankrupt balance sheet that can be defaulted on via bankruptcy. Until then, enjoy inflation eating it alive. You own nothing, you rent everything including the air you breathe from your masters in the form of income tax. You can withdraw your entire account in cash. But not before requesting days in advance, filling out FinCEN forms, Patriot Act forms, and sitting for an interview with a branch manager. Then, maybe they'll let you have your cash. The real shit hits the fan problem is that banks will leak your money back to you while it declines in value and while the bank gets increasingly insolvent. Deposit insurance, like FDIC, won't do much good in that scenario. Ultimately getting your money back is not nearly as important as getting it back now, while it still has value. With checking accounts paying, at most, a one quarter of a percent interest, safekeeping is the only argument that can be made to keep money in banks. It's now apparent that the bank itself will eventually become much more of a risk than holding cash. The bank itself is the thief in the night you need to worry about the most. Better read those fine print inserts or PDFs going forward. Just in case they can take your future cash from your credit card.
I am sure municipalities are already working on this in real estate property taxes as well as IRS. If so, it will change the entire underwriting for consumer credit dramatically. After all, the proverbial pendulum does tend to swing radically in both directions. From easy credit to no credit whatsoever. In the event of a banking crisis the deposit insurance would not be honored. When you deposit money in a bank account, you are an unsecured creditor. People are going to find out what that means which is why the banks are pushing gov for cashless society. Can't withdraw your deposit. Emo instead you would be offered a high yielding bond instead say 10 years at 5%, initially these would be worth more than face value due to the high yield. However due to the numbers that would need to be created it would be in the government's interest to inflate these away. When you come to redeem these for cash they will be worth sweet f all, just like war bonds were in 1920s Germany. Most people today have not seen money in their life. All they've seen are banknotes and digits on a computer screen. I think it is very innovative. The 1% aided and abetted by our government are continually developing new ways to fleece the ignorant sheep out of their earnings. Even bank robbers use innovation to improve their return and lessen their chances of getting caught. Just because someone is innovative does not mean they are not a crook. The only way to keep this economic model on the road is for interest rates to keep falling so you can keep adding more debt. After 2008 they dropped interest rates to the floor. Now they need to go negative. You may have noticed all the talk of negative rates, it's the only way you can keep this economic model going. The bankers saturated the markets in the developed world with their debt products before 2008. The bankers saturated the emerging markets with their debt products after 2008. Their business model is coming apart at the seams. Apple can saturate the market with an iPhone and then bring out a new version and start again. There is no debt to product, that's it. Prepare yourself. Intuitively you know the recession is coming sell stocks and real estate buy canned pork and beans and spaghetti o's halt your gender transformation, there's no return on investment. Suddenly asset values appear to be fraudulent. Real estate, stocks, and derivative values are hyped up flimflam devices Wall Street seems to be packed with cheaters and tricksters government economic numbers are conjured in the asylum for the criminally insane. The Trump recession tightens its grip. Layoffs, unemployment, and ennui GDP numbers in constant revision downward the stock market is revealed as a robotized skimmer humor as permanently lost the aristocracy is untouched. The stock market values are phantoms of delusion. The hordes of homeless imply sinister underlying economic forces at work. Things are not what they appear. There will come a time perhaps very soon, when all this financial wizardry will be exposed to the cold light of day, and maybe properly functioning equity, bond and precious metals markets will be wheeled into the light as if they are some sort of revelation that everyone had forgotten, but, en masse, suddenly rediscovered. All current markets are screwed, and all those who participate risk having the wool shone off their backs. QE equals wealth transfer from the plebs to the rich. Savers getting screwed. Credit or spending power is generated by moving future income to the present. If that future income is insufficient to service the debt credit now spent, who pays the bill? Ray Dalio explains that the payee is always the borrower or the lender. But the government steps in and socializes particular debt and makes it payable by neither debtor nor creditor but rather by the taxpayer. Explained by politicians as being benefiting the taxpayer. And explained by Miss Lagarde as people should prefer jobs over savings. Central bankers are now central planners whose mission it is to make all charts go from low left to high right. Central bankers are basically saying buy stocks, we already have, or we will punish you with rates below inflation and below zero. Buy ammo. Currency that packs a punch. It's portable and useful. Try lugging gold around or having it in units small enough to buy a carrot. The banks are already positioning to firewall their premises. No cash from tellers just the ATM. When that runs out in less than 6 hours, what you are going to do? The whole thing will come down and blamed on climate change or some other BS story. Just get ready cause you are not stopping it. We would need a total mass of psychological change in order to stop this. The concept is so simple, it's hard to wrap your brain around it. Create money from nothing, loan it out at interest, expand through fractional reserve banking, repeat process. Where is the money to repay the interest? It doesn't exist, welcome to the world hamster wheel folks. 
Taxpayers stuck with risky loans. They're fixed it for ya. Privatized gains, socialized losses. It's good to be a bankster. 2007 2008 all over again, yet this time on steroids, since the debt numbers are a whole lot bigger this time. As a matter of fact, personal debt is the largest of all time. What could possibly go wrong indeed? I think people will be amazed at just how many things can go wrong, and just how bad things can get. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.